to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing them, end them, to die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep to say, we end the heartache, and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream, aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's consummate, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merits of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietest make with the bare body, who would far spare to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickled o'er with the pale cast of thought enterprise of great pitch and moments. With this regard, the currents turn around and lose the name of action. Some have said that I was given keys to the city of your dreams. I'm more content to walk outside the walls and catch a breeze. I'm more inclined to climb on by your ride internal seas. I'm more alive to vibe inside a mansion full of trees I do this for 